Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all things jig fishing. We're going to be sitting down with Cody Roswick and he's going to break down everything you need to know to catch walleyes on jigs. So first things first, let's hear when Cody likes to use jigs. I look for places where I think the fish are concentrated. If I feel that the fish are concentrated on a piece of structure, maybe it's a current break or um, there's a little tip of a point where I see a lot of fish on the graph. Uh, they work in shallow water, deep water, anywhere in between. But what I'm looking for is concentrations of fish when I'm usually jig fishing. With the advancement of spot lock on a trolling motor, I find myself jigging a lot more and it's super effective. You can catch a lot of fish very quick. You can use little paddle tail minnows. I use a lot of live bait. Jig and a half crawler has been just dynamite for me this year. Now we're going to run through a few of Cody's favorite options starting with the RZ jig. What I love about this jig and I have them tied on my rods every day. It's such an effective tool is that it's got a, a good quality hook. It's got a wide gap, a very sharp Works great with artificials and live bait. I use a lot of half a night crawler, uh, leeches, small to medium sized minnows, and it's something that I rely in, rely on day in and day out. Now the RZ jig is really just a simple, simple jig, but it's really effective. And I noticed that Cody has a ton of them in his tackle box, but the next jig that Cody likes to use that he's gonna talk about right now is something that probably a lot of you have not used. So a highly overlooked jig is the Weed Weasel from Northland Tackle. So this little jig is my little secret weapon when I'm fishing heavy wood. Uh, Devil's Lake, Stump Lake, a lot of our little lakes out here in the Dakotas have a lot of uh, old trees in them and they're, they're hard to get into. There's a lot of fish that hang out in that heavy wood cover. This weed guard allows you to get that little jig in there and hop it around. I typically tip it with a half a night crawler or a leech and it's got a really stout hook and that's what I like when you when you actually hook a fish in there you got to kind of reef them out there like you're bass fishing and uh, so that stout hook on the weed weasel that weed guard and a little chunk of live bait is very effective in the wood. Now Cody's going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite aggressive jig fishing tactics for walleyes. So we all know artificials work really well one of my favorites is this little paddle minnow teamed up with a slurp jig head. What I like about this jig head is that it's got a long shank hook, a really good quality hook, very sharp, wide gap. The jig head's very hydrodynamic. It just teams up perfect with this little paddle minnow. And I cast them year round. What I, what I really rely on heavily in the spring is when the minnows are up on the shoreline and then again in the fall, um, you just, cast shorelines, you cast pieces of structures with these little swim baits. Obviously it's been talked about over and over again as a super effective tool. I'm telling you this is a great little combination for that. Um, when the shiners are running heavy in the spring, uh, when there's a uh, frog migration in the fall, that usually kicks off uh, a lot of bigger fish that move up in the fall and they're feeding on frogs, uh, juvenile perch and white bass. I find this to be a great combination. You gotta try this little paddle minnow slurp combination. It's deadly. Now one thing that's really critical when you're fishing plastics is to make sure that they're threaded on completely straight because it's gonna impact the action of the bait and at the end of the day, it's gonna impact how many fish you end up catching. So next up, Cody is gonna show a little system that he has for rigging up plastics that helps him rig up straight every time. I'm gonna show you a way to rig plastics perfect every time. I'm gonna take this paddle minnow and a slurp jig and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna match the plastic up to the to the jig shank here. And what I'm gonna do is just note where that hook needs to come through and then put a little nick in the plastic right there. And then when I'm threading that paddle minnow up the shank of this jig, I make sure that hook point comes out where I made that nick, run it up the shank there, and then you can see it's rigged perfectly straight and has the optimal action. Now Cody's gonna talk about the next jig, and it's one of my favorite new jigs in the Northland lineup. So we've really seen a resurgence of the hair jig. Northland's deep V jig has, uh, they have it with or without hair, and I really like the hair jigs for fishing the Missouri River. I typically tip it with a minnow or an artificial minnow, 
and it works really well in the current that that hair really bulks up the jig gives it a little bigger profile the bigger fish really love these hair jigs and then coupled up with that deep V design it's got kind of a, a V head and those large eyeballs last up we have a darting pre-rig option that was really really popular amongst walleye anglers this year so if you're looking for some crazy action in a jig check out the ripping minnow as you can see it's got this big fin down there that makes the jig dart back and forth you can walk the dog and it doesn't have the snag ability of a puppet minnow. It doesn't have a treble hook hanging down there. It's a great option for pitching weed lines, snap jigging, anytime the fish want a real erratic action. So it's real important that the soft plastic be rigged perfectly straight on the ripping minnow. And Northland does you a favor. It's pre-rigged in the package and also comes with a couple extra minnows. So just make sure that you get it nice and straight, that it's sandwiched up real nice. It gives you that unique darting action if it's rigged properly. All right, so now that you've had the rundown on all of Cody's favorite walleye jigs, the next logical question is, well, what size should I get? So Cody's gonna answer that right now. So there's a lot of choices in jigs, and especially jig sizes. A lot of people ask, what size jigs do I use? And a couple of rules of thumb is, early in the year, I use usually a little lighter jigs. I use a lot of 16th, 8th ounce jigs. Uh, typically you're fishing shallower water, less than 10 feet. And then when you get out past 10 feet, that's when the 3 16ths and the quarter ounce jig get a lot of action. Um, you know, 10 to 20 foot, that's when uh, a 3 16ths or a quarter ounce jig is really effective. It gets down to the, gets down to the bottom. Pretty much all our game fish uh, reside on the bottom of the lake so you got to get down there and quarter ounce jig is probably the most popular size and then you get into late summer and fall and I find myself fishing a lot deeper water you know 20 30 feet is pretty normal for me and that's when the 3 8 even a half ounce jig is very effective to get down to those depths so when it comes to comes to fishing shallow 16th and 8th the mid-range the 3 16th and quarter and then the deeper water over 20 feet that's when 3 eighths and half ounce usually gets the nod. Now once you've got the right jigs for the right situations the last piece of the puzzle is how you present them and Cody's going to show you how he does that right now. So what kind of retrieve you have when you're working these jigs is basically you just cast it out. I got a little paddle minnow on here and when you're working that paddle minnow I pretty much just cast it out and do a straight retrieve. Uh, maybe a few hops here and there, a couple pauses really helps. But for the most part, just cast it out and reel it back in. You want to just swim that bait through the, through the water column. That's why everybody calls them swim baits. Some people call them little button tails. And then anytime I'm using a little minnow style bait, I'll cast it out there and then I'll just reel and hop reel and hop that jig back to the boat and it doesn't matter if it's a little fork tail minnow or a live minnow you just want to hop it back to the boat just just reel with a little hopping action and that usually gets bit a lot of times they the fish grab it on the paws or anytime you let it fall down to the bottom that's usually when the fish grabs it so there you have it that's everything you need to know to catch walleyes on jigs this season, next season, whenever you're watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed it and you learned something. And if you did, hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome videos coming. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.